one day, not in the so far future, humans will go back on the moon. We will be able to have the hardware uh, ready and useful uh, for the tasks that are needed. We are trying to get to Mars. One of the key uh, questions that, that we have to, to answer in the future is, for, is, is if there is life outside the Earth. We test uh, the astronaut and the rover underwater in low gravity, in lunar gravity. All these are important to prepare and train astronauts for these future missions. This is quite a unique uh, element in, in the world. And I've learned uh, a lot from them. If we don't learn now how to live somewhere else, to start with another planet of the solar systems, and sometimes in the far future in another solar system, we will disappear. What a pity. The European Space Research and Development Project, Moonwalk, has devised a range of technologies for astronaut-rover collaboration. The project focuses on the human exploration of the surface of the Moon or Mars using robots, in particular rovers that can assist humans with difficult and dangerous tasks, as well as carry tools and samples. The purpose of Moonwalk is to prepare us for future space exploration. The technologies developed during Moonwalk were tested in two mission simulations, one for Mars in Rio Tinto, Spain, and another for the Moon off the coast of Marseille, France. In Moonwalk, seven companies and institutes from seven member states collaborated. COMEX from France, Airbus Group from the UK, Liquifer Systems Group from Austria, Space Application Services from Belgium, INTA, the National Institute for Technology and Aerospace from Spain, the NTNU, Center for Interdisciplinary Research in Space from Norway, and, as the coordinating institution, DFKI, the German Center for Artificial Intelligence. DFKI is coordinating this project, um, and DFKI is also responsible for the development of a scout rover. What we tested is the interaction between an astronaut and a scout rover, so the main focus of our developments was on new methods for the um, control of a scout rover through an astronaut, um, an astronaut who is very limited in his movements uh, due to the very heavy spacesuit he has on. It's interesting through the Moonwalk project to look how astronauts can be helped by rovers uh, driving close to them on the planetary surface to keep heavy weights like uh, rocks uh, into their uh, canisters and maybe also to climb uh, cliffs or special terrain that astronauts won't be able to climb because of this bulky suit they need because of the very low pressure or no pressure on the moon. The helper rover is controlled using an interface attached to the astronaut's arm. From within a heavy spacesuit, the astronaut can use small gestures to steer the rover in all directions. I think the new ways of controlling a robot by a person uh, through, for example, gestures is something that's uh, very interesting for uh, space research. But it's also, for example, interesting for underwater applications where you have a diver that wants to control an underwater vehicle. The Moonwalk lunar simulations took place offshore and underwater at a depth of 10 meters. This was in order to simulate low gravity. The aim was to be able to control the helper rover at one-sixth of lunar gravity. Simple gestures provided a flexible range of driving options. Another feature is that the rover is equipped with a specialized wheel. In Rio Tinter, the rover was easily able to enter a cave that the simulation astronaut could not explore himself. At the same time, a unique space simulation suit called Gandolfi II was developed by COMEX and extensively tested. Like the rover, this space simulation suit can be used both underwater or on land. The potential of this training suit is basically uh, training astronauts. It is, a, it is a tool to teach astronauts how to do missions on Mars or on the Moon. And it has several functionalities. It's constraining the movements of the astronaut. It also simulates the weight of the suit on Mars. There's not a second suit like that in the world that is only dedicated to training 
Our system is simple enough to be used in a lot of configurations, but it very nicely fits into the training purpose of, of, of this kind of mission. So this is quite a unique uh, element in, in the world. For the astronaut to enter the suit, a special interface, known as a suit port, was developed. The simulation astronaut steps into the suit through a habitat interface, which prevents the contamination of the habitat by the planetary surface and vice versa. Astronauts on the Moon or on Mars will have to reside in a habitat. The SHE habitat, a self-deployable pod for extreme environments, was built in the course of another EU project. It was used in numerous ways during the Rio Tinto simulations. Communication is a key element of these elaborate missions. To handle such complex requirements, an advanced EVA information system was developed. Space Application Services was involved developing a human-machine interface that allows the astronaut to communicate with Earth uh, with communications delay. The HMI, the human-machine interface, allows uh, the crew uh, and uh, the people on Earth to follow on what procedure the astronaut is at at any given time. We're also in charge of the communication system that uh, is connecting uh, the robot and is connecting the human-machine interface and is connecting Brussels with this uh, communications uh, delay. Near Brussels, a mission control center was established to simulate ground control. There, flight controllers gained complete oversight of the analog missions. For the Rio Tinto simulations, the Moonwalk team installed an astrobiology lab inside the Xi habitat, which was then used to conduct microbiological investigations. The interest involved in this project is to support and to offer the astrobiological um, environment to the project, is to support the project with scientific instrumentation, mainly for light detection, like with the Raman spectrometer and also the science of light detector instrument that is able to detect molecular biomarkers. What INTA does is to put the reason for astrobiology uh, and for a planetary mission in the in, in Moonwalk project. The Rio Tinto landscape is an excellent simulation surface from Mars because of its mineralogy. The microbes found in these extreme environments make it possible to mimic astrobiological research. Simulations are needed to prepare for every possible scenario on an extraterrestrial surface. During analog tests, Astronauts can mimic working on the Moon or on Mars in order to prepare for the exploration of foreign planets. The results also make it possible to anticipate what can go wrong during real missions. For the astronauts, it's imperative to be well trained. Strict, detailed procedures have to be developed for all routines and activities. For the Rio Tinto simulations, these descriptions were developed by Liquifer Systems Group. We develop, first of all, the procedures. These are kind of storyboards which tell the astronaut what to do with the rover on a planetary surface. Then uh, we developed uh, tools for the astronauts. Amongst them were a pantograph tool. It's a single-handed sampling tool for loose matter. And we also developed a foldable pickup claw for solid um, little rocks or stones. To complement the setup with the tools, uh, we developed a payload rover mock-up box. That is a box onto the rover which could store all the tools, including the samples taken. Astronauts face many challenging tasks during simulation missions. Moonwalk partner Airbus has developed a biomonitoring system that can give mission control a better understanding of the astronauts' physiological and emotional state. Airbus hopes the biomonitoring systems can be uh, matured further so they can be applied in other situations uh, where there's very high stress or very critical roles, such as air traffic control or people working on frontline services. An enormous amount of data can be collected with projects like Moonwalk. The challenge is to evaluate the data correctly and perform high-quality analyses. NTNU was responsible for both data gathering and data evaluation throughout the project. We are comparing uh, the analog simulation site uh, of Rio Tinto with the analog simulations in, in Marseille and also with lab testings. So we are trying to find out what do we get out of doing analog simulations and comparing robot and astronaut uh, procedures. The subsea landscape near Marseille was selected to represent the lunar surface. 
Here, scenarios were conducted in an even more complex way. The suit, the suit port, the rover, and all of the equipment had to be installed underwater before the astronaut could enter the suit. All the moonwalk elements, such as the procedures, the tools, the suit, the suit port, um, but also the gesture-controlled rover, can be part of future space activities, space missions on the Moon and on Mars. And um, to advance Europe's capabilities, all these are important to prepare and train astronauts for these future missions. In the future, we will be able to produce a new iteration of our human-machine interface and we can come up with new concepts of operations that can make this work more effective. And of course, we would like that our hardware becomes flight-ready and that once uh, Europe or anybody wants to go to Mars or to the Moon, uh, we will be able to have the hardware uh, ready and useful uh, for the tasks that are needed. Project Moonwalk takes us one step further into the future of human space exploration, pairing humankind and technology to transcend known boundaries.